Hi, I'm Lauren, creator of Lauren Bay in Occupational Therapy. I'm an occupational therapist in the inner west of Sydney, and I've decided to create this series to help either other occupational therapists or health professionals engage in neuro rehabilitation practices, or for people that have experienced a stroke or brain injury, specifically to gain functional use of their affected arm. So neuroplasticity is the topic I wanted to talk about today. It's a, a word that you may have heard or may not have heard. And what it means is the brain that changes itself. And there's a book about that, actually, if you want to read it. It's got um, really good narrative examples of people that have experienced um, brain injury and stroke and other things where they've learned to relearn movement patterns. So our brain is changing all the time and adapting to our environment and our skills. Similarly, say you learnt something as a child or a teenager, like, I don't know, trigonometry, and you did it every day and every night for homework and you studied and studied and studied. But then 10 years, 20 years have passed and you haven't done trigonometry since. It's likely that those neural pathways from the brain are lost, meaning that those connections that you had to be able to perform that task or that skill have probably gone. So the key message I want to get across today is in order for neuroplasticity to work after brain injury and stroke, the person needs to practice the tasks prescribed to them by their health professional over and over and over again. And I'll get into that in a minute. So neuroplasticity or my understanding of neuroplasticity is for each movement, thought, behavior or skill, we have all these neural pathways from our brain. So the right side of our brain controls the left side of our body for movement and sensation and vice versa. So for each movement we have on our left side of our body, the right side of the brain controls. So if I was just going to give a thumbs up, it's this part of my brain that's passing a message down a neural pathway to tell me to do that. And if it's something that you do all the time, it's really automatic. You might not even realize that you're doing it because that neural pathway, that bond is really strong and it's really ingrained. If you've experienced a stroke or brain injury and part of the right side of your brain is damaged, two things can happen. The brain tries to repair the damage and fix itself to regain those old neural pathways. But the second thing and the more fun thing that happens is the brain tries to bypass the injured part of the brain and create new neural pathways. It just takes a really long time and a lot of practice. The theory is still out as to how many repetitions you need to do to be able to relearn a movement. So I used to have a client, for example, that the only movement that they had in the beginning was this movement in the shoulder out to the side or abduction and slightly forward flexion and then back, which is extension. That's all they had. Their elbow had a lot of spasticity, so they couldn't do that yet. Their wrist was really stiff again from spasticity and they couldn't open their fingers or thumb yet. So the only movement they had was from the shoulder. So that's where we started. If that client only did this couple of times a day or once a week when they saw me, it wouldn't be enough to be able to get that movement further and stronger because the brain again is trying to relearn how to do that movement. So we started to call it to make it functional the copy cup the, the coffee cup grab, which is sort of that forward motion of as though you want to get that coffee, but just from the shoulder. So it was forward and then back and then forward and then back over and over again. So that's just one example. But the key message again, what I'd like to get across is, for any of the movements that you're trying to achieve, you need to start small, start with the movements that you do have and practice them over and over again. One of the theories is a thousand repetitions or as many as you can possibly do every single day. If you only do it once a week, you're not gonna get strong neural pathways. If you do it every day, you've got a better chance. And if you do it multiple times a day, better still. And my best example is even just for a general skill for anyone, like swimming. If you swim once a month, do you think you're going to get better? Probably not. Once a week? 
maybe twice a week. How about every day? How about twice a day? So if you think about it, the more you do a pattern, a movement pattern or one movement, the stronger that those bonds, those neural pathways will become. I hope this makes sense. Thanks for listening. Um, I'll continue this series soon. See you later. Bye.